All right, so yeah, my name is Jonathan Brown. I'm a full stack web developer, and I have almost three years of professional development experience. Almost, it's, it doesn't matter. And today we are talking about getting started with the REST API and AngularJS. Um, I know it's not React, the new hotness and all that stuff, but I still like it. So, um, first thing we're going to do is go over the folder structure. Um, for anybody who's done Angular 4, um, I kind of structure the AngularJS structure the same way, where you have um, components and uh, shared components and your application uh, folder with your JavaScript and uh, CSS and SAS and things like that all separated nice and neat. Uh, and then we're going to show you the WordPress setup because you can't have anything about WordPress setup. Uh, the WordPress setup specifically, we're going to be using 4.9 because uh, anything, things like 4.7, I'm pretty sure, uh, maybe 4.6, the REST API, you have to use a plugin to actually. Um, access the REST API out of the box. Uh, we will not be using a theme. The plugins will be ACF Pro, uh, ACF to REST, and a custom post type manager because I'm lazy and I don't feel like writing the code to uh, register my custom post types. Uh, if you do write the code or if you use the uh, manager, you need to make sure that you have show and REST set to true or else you can't access the uh, posts in the REST. Here is the folder structure. You have your index.html file, which is going to be the root file. You can kind of consider that like the uh, header and footer for WordPress. Um, everything in between the header and footer is going to be your views. Uh, you have sidebar and global services in your shared thing. Well, I'll say it's shared. It's going to be anything that is used on multiple controllers uh, throughout your application. And then for this particular project, we have articles, home, movies, and shows, which are going to be uh, the different sections of the site. So you have like a shows list or you know an individual show, you have your home page, uh, things like that. Uh, common files then are going to be your home controller, your home service, and your home view. Uh, notice that I've made, made the folder name home and then everything after that is like folder name, controller, folder name, service, folder name view. It just makes it easier to uh, navigate through your site and pretty much know where you're at at any given time. All right, so it's kind of like the, the gist of it for the introduction part. Now we're going to actually get to the creating the main app file. I am going to have code for you guys to see because I don't like seeing slides that are just slides and I'm just like, okay, I guess I'm just going to put what you're saying and hope you got it. That's kind of you know what you want to see. Uh, so Angular itself has to be defined in a variable inside of a module file. So it's you can enqueue it or include it in your, your application. And it's not going to work. You got to tell it like, "Hey, I'm instantiating you. I need you to do some stuff." So to do that, let's write my mouse. You uh, have this app.module.js file and call a variable. I'm calling it app because I'm creative. Um, you give it a namespace essentially, and then you tell it what uh, dependencies that particular Angular installation or instantiation is going to use. Uh, and once you have that. That's how you start using Angular. Uh, you come in here, and where it says ng app, that's kind of a declaration for Angular to recognize that uh, this is the essential Angular module you're using. And then that namespace you gave that variable is what you're going to be using. So once you do that, start using Angular. You can use all of its cool little built-in functions and things like that. Are you using any plugins to help you with your development with Angular? And mm, not right now. I was going to use okay. Gulp uh, as a task manager, but um, I didn't have time to do that. I, you know, I kind of built this out halfway yesterday, so um, yeah, there's that. Uh, we're including Angular.min, Angular Route, Angular Resource, and Angular Sanitize. I downloaded those because um, the Wi-Fi here was kind of spotty yesterday, and my application completely broke when it couldn't load Angular because it doesn't have Angular. Um, normally, CDN links will work just as well. Uh, I'll, I'll tell Liam I said that though, because he's all about uh, downloading all your stuff to make sure that uh, you have access to it at any given time because you know CDN link might go down or you know whatever it's not going to work properly. Uh, I go back. Oop. Yeah, so this is kind of what it's described. It's the index.html file. We uh, declared you know ng app in the top, and then uh, we included the uh, the dependencies for it, so the Angular file, all the little 
uh, libraries that Angular has with it. And then uh, we included our controller files and Bootstrap, which I know is not foundation and it's not cool, but um, <laughs> Angular kind of runs on Bootstrap. If you use uh, Angular 4, it actually comes with Bootstrap by default. So what's next? Uh, so whatever you name, you don't have to use app as your variable name or your namespace. Uh, I was not creative in the naming convention, so I was just doing something really basic. Uh, and a lot of the tutorials you'll see will call it like, uh, if you look at Scotch, I think they call their Scotch app or something along those lines. So uh, just name whatever you want, whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, so. Mm, I do things a little bit differently. I would like to know what routes I had before I start actually coding stuff. Uh, so then I can build my controller and things like that more efficiently. And what routes are basically uh, how your application handles URLs. So by default, you know, it's not like WordPress where you just build a page and you know, it generates the URL for you. You kind of have to tell it what to expect and what to, what to do whenever it hits that route. Uh, so you can load a template, which is kind of like a string representation of uh, the output you want to output whenever it hits that URL. I don't like doing that though, because I don't like doing markup in strings. It's very disgusting to me, personally. Uh, and then you tell it what controller to use. So the controller, um, we're gonna get into that in a little bit. Uh, for a little warning, when you write URLs, I don't know about you guys, but I like to do relative URLs in PHP, where you just do like forward slash, the thing, you know, whatever post you're trying to go to, that doesn't work with Angular. It doesn't like that. You have to do the uh, hash bang symbol, which is this pound exclamation point, and then you can do your relative URL from there because the pound exclamation point kind of tells it where it's going to start their uh, URL from, and that's called hash bang. Sounds cool. Uh, controllers, that power. Okay, this is the, uh, the stuff that actually po uh, powers your Angular app. Um, and by power, I mean it's, it's, I'll just explain it just a minute. Um, they're the heavy lifters. Uh, Angular is considered a MD whatever um, application. So it's, normally it's a model view controller. And, you know, you go through and you have your code split up and all those three different things. Um, with Angular though, it's a little weird. From my perspective, the model in this case is kind of like the controller. It does a little bit of both. So, um, the controller is going to be handling the data as opposed to it being handled by the model and the controller would just pass it back and forth to the views. Uh, this kind of goes and gets the data and updates the data and sets the data and then passes it back to and from the view. Uh, with this specific thing being uh, related to WordPress um, and the REST API, it's going to go, like I say, get the data from REST API. If you need to modify it after you get it, you can go through and look through it and you know, do things like that and it's going to pass it to the view. Uh, let me show you, I think, the next one. Yeah, scope. So, scope. Has anybody here worked with .NET before? No? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Do you know what the view bag is? No? Okay, so it's basically a bag where you just stuff everything you can that the view is going to use and the view can access it. So, that's essentially what the view bag is. Scope does the same thing. It's literally just a bag where you stuff data into it. And whatever data you stuff in there, you have access to on the front for the view. Um, so I have a little example for this. It is super basic. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, I've got this one. Oh no, that was the right one. That's on both. All right, so um, this scope right here, uh, that is essentially a bag, and then you just say scope.message, and you can put in whatever you want in that message. And then in the uh, home view, you just say, can I have a message from the scope? And there you go. That's essentially what scope is. It's just one large bag that you're going to stuff a ton of things into. Uh, yeah, if you define, uh, one of the things, if you define scope in one, well, I would say define, but if you use scope in one controller, another controller doesn't have access to that scope variable. So it's, they're separate from uh, each instantiation of the controller. Uh, dependency injection, this is kind of the workhorse of uh, Angular. So, um, dependency injection sounds super complicated. And it's going to be, you know, this massive beast, and it's really not. Um, using the scope variable is actually dependency in injection. 
you inject it into the controller and the controller has access to all the methods and properties and things like that that uh, it comes with. And then you can, obviously in the scope uh, situation, you can adjust you know, or add properties to it and do things of that nature. Uh, this is a service, I'll get to that in just a little bit. I was going to do, uh, I'll do a slideshow. I realize I'm glossing over this and making it sound like super quick and super simple, but there's, there's a ton of stuff to cover. Uh, so services. Um, services are pretty simple. Uh, it's kind of like making sure that your, your code is dry. If you see something that you're reusing in multiple controllers or multiple functions, you would create a service for it like that's tied to the application uh, module, so in this case the app module. Uh, so that you can use that service wherever you want. Um, you can do whatever you want. And then from there, it's you would inject it into your controller, just like you would the scope variable or a couple of the other things we're going to cover. Um, an example of it's right here. So app.service, you know, it's a cool service. Um, I have amazing naming conventions. Uh, and then you say this dot cool stuff is equal to a function, and it logs out and do stuff. Uh, you would inject that into this controller right here, and then you would just call that function, and it would do whatever is inside that function. So again, you know, it's keeping your stuff dry. Uh, let's go back to the slot here. Uh, so views. Views, if you've done that, or really any type of MVC framework, they are the markup that uh, you're going to be using for your um, application. It's literally just HTML. Um, there's some custom things that Angular does uh, that actually gets put onto the markup itself, which I'm going to show you guys in just a little as we get to the cool code demo. Uh, they can be as big as or as small as you need them to be. Um, I have a view that is all of, I think, six lines long, and I have another one that's you know a little bit longer, but I don't need a big chunk of code to do it. It's something very small and uh, personally I don't I haven't really needed something that's been an entire web page in a view. Like, uh, it's a little chunk here and there and then um, you just operate on the front end and the view gets tied to the controller. Uh, as I said, you know, views are powered by the respective controllers. You can, I think, have just a view that does like no custom data. It just outputs some workup, but uh, for the most part you're going to have something that's tied to a controller. Uh, as I showed you earlier, accessing the scope variable. Uh, when I first started, I was like, okay, so I'm on the front end, I gotta do scope dot whatever the variable is gonna be. And it took me about 10 minutes to figure out why my uh, variable was not outputting. And it's because uh, Angular by default kind of knows that when you're using a variable on the front end, it's like, okay, this is gonna be a scope mess, uh, the, the scope variable. So I don't need to know that it's in the scope. So just tell me what it is in the scope that you want me to access and we'll do it. And if you're familiar with handlebars or some other type of template language, you'll see, oh no, um, you just do double curly braces around it and it outputs the front end. Uh, so, looping over an object in scope. <clears throat> Has anybody here done PHP? Yes. Yes, everybody? Okay. <laughs> there we go. So, this is kind of the same. Um, let's say you have a list of items, you know, a navigation for example. Um, and you want to output every single element in this navigation uh, list. There we go. Uh, you would do ng dash repeat is equal to nav item in this case in nav items. So the nav items is declared in your controller, you know, and you fill it up with all the data you want. Uh, you would do that on the list item though, and not on the actual UL. Otherwise, you're going to have a repeating list of ULs and not a repeating list of LIs. So uh, be careful with that. And again, this goes on to markup. Uh, here's a quick example of that. Just want to share. Oh, wait, that's right. I put it in the index file because I'm lazy. Uh, yeah, so nav item ng repeat, nav item in all nav items, and then it just goes through and builds out all the things. Um, these properties are built from WordPress. Uh, Accessing the REST API, and I'll show you guys that in you know, just a couple minutes once we get to the actual demo and cool code stuff and all that, thing, all that stuff. Uh, 
you can use other properties such as NGF to check the value of certain things that you're on. Uh, NGF, NGRepeat, NGApp, and NGInit are they're considered directives, and you can create custom directives um, to do whatever it is you need it to do. And you literally just do ng and then the directive name. Um, yeah, this is directives are kind of I'm not gonna show you guys how to build one because that's just a little too much for this conversation. So it's there. Filters. We're not talking about Instagram people. This is a uh, this is Angular. Okay, so we're gonna show you guys some cool stuff that Angular does with filters. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever had you know some issues where you have something you want to change the display format and you have to write up some JavaScript function or PHP function to go through and do it. Um, Angular has a bunch of filters built in by default that you just can use like out of the box. Super simple. Um, you know, in this case, post.publish date. Um, let's say you had it in one format and you want another. You just type pipe date and then you just pass it the format you want. Um, it has some defaults set to it so that you don't have to go through and do it for every single one of them. Uh, you know, it's currency, date, limit to, and limit to is kind of like uh, trim for JavaScript. So if you want to create a custom excerpt and you don't feel like you know accessing the REST API of the excerpt or somebody didn't fill it in, you can just get the post content and put limit to on it and call it a day. Uh, all right, so I know I breezed over the Angular part. Kind of uh, had to to actually get to this part. So the important part is why everybody's here, because everybody likes access on the REST API. Right? right? Just me? Yes. All right. So again, so long as you have, I think it's 4.6 or 4.7 or up with WordPress, you can access the REST API without a plugin. If you do use the plugin, you have to change your URL structure because it does uh, something a little bit different. Uh, to access all your routes, which this is incredibly helpful, just go to whatever the WordPress uh, install name is, forward slash WP dash JSON. And that gives you a list of all your routes that are registered to your uh, WordPress install. And it's not just WordPress routes either. It'll give you ACF routes. Uh, if you're using the events calendar, it'll show you all those too. Um, basically, any API endpoint that has been uh, registered to your WordPress install will show up there. So it's kind of like the master map. Uh, let's see. So types. And by types, I mean post types. So let me switch over to this. So this is a wonderful Angular app. It's working. It's a home page. Um, so these are all post types. The pages, media, movies, articles, and shows, uh, and posts. Those are all post types, and to get those, I'm literally just going to my this URL right here, and then putting four size types in it, and it'll give you a list of all the post types in there, with um, some unique data for each one. So let me, uh, what's my URL? I don't really want them. So, um, you can see each one of these is the post type. Um, you can do descriptions and you know get some other information from it. So for this particular one though, I'm just getting the name and the slug uh, from each one of those. Um, you can see that right here, that's where that nav item dot name, nav item dot slug. Notice the hash bang right there. Um, if you do the relative URL, it's not gonna know what to do with that and give you the wrong route. Uh, and we're just looking through the all nav items which you get from this uh, controller. We're passing in scope and HTTP. Um, HTTP is basically their way of um, ask, accessing uh, AJAX methods. We're doing a get method. I have this rest path right here built out as a uh, constant because I don't want to have to change this in multiple places for everywhere that I use a REST API call. So define it once. And if you need to update it because for some reason, and I don't see it ever happening, but they update their API URL, you only need to change it in one place. Uh, let's see, we're running out of that. Passing in the types, doing a get method, and then from there you say, on the success callback, it'll pass back all the data that you just requested, which in this case is this massive thing of JSON, uh, with all the different post types in there. And then we're just outputting it on the front end. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, to get all posts of a specific type, you would just type in. Uh, 
Pass in the type you want after the MPB2, and it would give you a list of all the, the posts that are inside of that post type. Um, to get a specific one, you just say, I think I did two slashes, I did that specific ID for that particular post type, and it will give you all the post data that you have for that. Notice with ACF REST, um, ACF key, and then from there it has all the meta fields that we uh, registered for it. If you don't have that, you have to go through and update your, uh, your your REST routes to get the post meta and attach it to the route and send it to you. That's why I like using ACF for REST. I don't really have to do much work for it. I activate it and there we go. Good to go. Uh, it's covered getting the post. You just pass the post ID. Um, not much to it. And ACF for REST, with the REST, you know, except I don't want to do a ton of work when it comes to getting post meta. I feel like it should come by default for the most part. Um, and you activate the plugin and it automatically does all this stuff for you. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, so to output multiple posts, you would do an ng repeat in each one of those. You'd say nav item dot, you know, slug or dot name. If you have a single one, you don't have to do a loop through it. You just say give me the post dot id or in the case of ACF, post dot acf dot field name. What if you don't have the light? I don't mind. Uh, you, you, you uh, that, are right? you going to provide the, uh, the slides? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, that's so. This is for the most part the end of the slide demo. Um, I do have a bunch of code written so that you guys can see it and how it works and how everything um, kind of interacts with each other. So I only did uh, the shows and the show. So it kind of went working over there. So right here, uh, when you define the controller, you're telling it what dependencies to use. We're using scope, HTTP, SCE, interval, and timeout. SCE is just sanitization, um, which you can see right here. We're passing in the route, the resource, and sanitize. So the routes you have to have in order to use route params and routes itself. Uh, you have resource, which is the HTTP methods, um, and then you have sanitize, which is that sanitize method. There's a reason I'm using that, and it's not because I'm sanitizing data. It's because I'm telling it not to sanitize data. Because that, by default, Angular sanitizes your data. When you get content from the REST API from a WYSIWYG, it's got HTML markup in it. And it's going to treat it as a string if you go to inject it by default into your view, which is awful. Um, Can I ask a question? Go for it. So, where do those uh, dependencies actually get passed into this function? Does Angular do that automatically just based on the variable name? I'm sorry. Uh, so you the, have oh, your the variables that are like HTTP and SCE. Yeah. Where do you pass those into the function? Does Angular do that automatically for you just based on matching the variable name to the service name? Um, for the most part, yeah. Okay. So uh, inside of the app module, you'll see that we actually have to tell it that these are things it has access to based off those files that we linked in the footer. And then from there, each one of these could have multiple services that are tied to a specific file. Okay. So um, HTTP is in the resource file, but I think it has a couple other things that are defined on it. Um, sanitize, just, I, I know it has SCE, I don't know what else is in there, but it could potentially have multiple dependencies that you could then inject inside of your controllers. Okay. Um, so, we have, I'm going to show you guys this, it's pretty cool. Um, pretty proud of this, I came up with last night. I thought it was pretty awesome. So, these are the shows. Um, I clearly grew up in the 90s because I love Family Guy, King of the Hill, and The Simpsons, <coughs> Parks and Recreation. Still awesome. If you guys haven't watched it yet, you can get to watch it. It's super funny. Um, so, we have uh, essentially an interval watcher going right now that will watch for data updates on the REST API and reflect it inside of view without you having to do anything outside of update a post or something like that. So, you set this to draft and view this. Didn't have to refresh or do anything. It automatically uh, went through what is con it considers a digest cycle, which is like um, when you call something like uh, this timeout function uh, right here, the digest cycle will actually take the data that you're passing into it, uh, go to the view and update the view based off the data that it just got. So uh, it's kind of like, a, I would say, like a refiring of the WordPress loop. It'll go through and see if anything's been updated, and if it has, it'll go through and uh, update your front end view. So. So is it, it's just pulling the server, the server every 10 seconds? Uh, for right now, yeah. There's other ways you can do it. Uh, 
I kind of came up with this on the fly. Uh, it doesn't really, I've had this running for 30 minutes now and it hasn't <laughs> had any type of uh, noticeable impact in terms of uh, uh, performance right now. If there's a couple hundred items on the page, you probably have a performance hit right there. Uh, you can go through and I don't remember which one of these uh, actually control it, controls it. You can update any of the content in here and it will update on the uh, the front as well. You made it a draft. Yep. Oh, did I? No, yeah. I published it. Oh, did you? Uh, and then inside this, uh, I have a little date ticker that will work on shows that haven't actually expired yet because King of the Hill last aired in 2010, unfortunately. Um, that they might bring it back. Huh? They might bring it back. Will it? Poppy as a teenager. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. With this one, it has a countdown to when the next episode is going to show based off of uh, the data for this particular one that is in uh, the post itself. I mainly coded this. There's probably a way you can access another API to pull in information and update things. Uh, so, or not mainly code, I mainly enter this data so that it helps on the front end and does a nice little ticker on it to uh, show you how much longer you have until the show airs. I'm super excited about King of the Hill coming back. It's the rumor about it, yeah. Um, yeah, so this pulls it every 10 seconds to go through, update. Uh, we have a get data by default because if you load the page the first time, it'll take 10 seconds um, to actually display the data if you don't have that first call right there. Uh, and if you do an individual show, this one's kind of uh, more JavaScript than Angular with this. Uh, the, the timer, it's more just JavaScript that outputs some work of and does some calculations based off the time that gets passed into it on the front end, um, which you can see. Should be somewhere in here. Um, yeah. Oh, there's the air date, and then. Um, that's right, put it in the controller itself. So once it gets the, the data, it'll initialize the clock, um, and then do scope, show, ACF, show next, episode two, um, render out the, the countdown clock. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, getting started with Angular is not, it's not difficult at all. Um, I built this thing out in a couple hours yesterday. Um, which I don't think I did too bad for like three or four hours at work. Uh, and it's as long as you have a good handle on JavaScript, which I would highly recommend you have before you jump into any type of framework, you can pretty much figure out without, you know, uh, extensive amount of work, um, how it actually works. And then Angular itself has, let's see here, cause an error in here. <laughs> I believe that's what it is. Oh, it does show. Go to the shows. It has this nice little error message on here that when you click, please don't be bad Wi Fi. Yeah. Okay. It'll actually tell you, relatively speaking, what happened with your application and why it's not working. In this case, it'll say the shows controller isn't registered. That pulled in from your application and tells you what the problem is right there. Um, so as long as you have decent Wi-Fi, uh, you, can, you can troubleshoot your application pretty simply just by looking at the error messages that Angular throws, um, which I'm very grateful for because I don't like the ones that are in absolute amounts of callback and I have to follow a massive stack to get down to where the actual issue is. Uh, Guys, have any questions? Is it going to be possible to like use Angular two and up with WordPress because of like all that compiling? Oh, oh absolutely. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So with Ang the the main thing with um, Angular two to four, um, nothing's really going to change in how you access the REST API. You're still going to be going and getting the data, and then you would just stuff it inside of um, uh, in their situation a class variable that you do, you would then just access on the front end. Uh, it's you're going to be accessing the REST API the same way, and you're going to be getting the data in the same structure. So from there, it's just um, looking through it and putting it into the proper variables that you can use on the front end. How's it like building though, like on the back end with like Webpack and everything it uses? Um, I use the CLI because it just makes life easier. What's it um, called? The Angular CLI. Oh, okay. Um, 
I have a small project going right now that's just uh, consuming a API <coughs> of news that will then save it to local storage. Uh, you can do the same thing though with um, with the, the REST API. You would just bring the REST API, loop through it, um, stuff your data in whatever variable or class or um, whatever you really need to to output it on the front end. It's nothing like it's the the structure is different, but the way you would go about getting the data and um, outputting it is kind of the same, except for you would be using scope in this case. You would use whatever your class is that's powering or your controller is that's powering your uh, your view. So yeah, that's that's the great thing about like the REST API is that it's really doesn't matter really what framework you're using, if you're accessing the REST API, it's always gonna feed you the data in the same format. And then you can just loop through that and excuse me, um, use it however you need to. Um, do, you, do you know of any like single page applications using WordPress <coughs> Angular right now? Uh, not off the top of my head. Um, I personally love how uh, WordPress stores data. I do not like these massive like 200 column wide tables that I have to interact with. If it's post meta, just give me all post meta and I can do something with that from there. Um, it's just, it makes like my life so much easier working with it. Uh, I just don't like working with custom tables too much anymore. I used to, and now I'm just like, God, this is awful. Um, you, you want me to show you kind of that application real quick? It's not uh, something specific to WordPress, but it'll kind of consume the data in the same way. Oh, wait, no, that's on my computer at home. Uh, yeah, so I will put it up as part of the repo. I have that link to this too. Um, any other questions right now? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was late, so if you answered this already, but um, just comments on the frameworks. I'm mostly back end developer, so mm -hmm. why, you know, why Angular over React or Vue? I mean, and if you just, it's just I think it better. That's fine. I just was curious. I honestly don't have a preference. I, or, or, I, think it, I have a preference, <laughs> but it doesn't matter which one you're using. I mean, uh, what is it? React is more what they consider like a library, so you have to add things to it in order to do things. Um, Angular obviously has some stuff built into it. But even then, you're still having to access outside, or I would say outside, but other resources that come along with it, you know, to do some of the functionality. Um, I just learned Angular first, so it's a preference at this yeah. point in time. Um, obviously, a bad choice since they're pushing over to React for Google blocks and things like that. <laughs> but um, it's whatever. I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, I haven't had a reason yet to build like a headless WordPress Angular app, but mm -hmm. it's not something that's going to be difficult to do at this point in time. Um, I guess I'm not really just a fan of Angular. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're okay with Vue or React, which I hear I, you has I a, haven't really picked one, I guess is why I'm <coughs> asking. And I, oh. I, I mostly do back end stuff. So gotcha. So Vue, Vue is supposed to be um, the easiest one in terms of barrier entry, barriers of entry. Mm -hmm. um, React Max and Angular at last, which I haven't really used React or Vue, so I can't really attest on either one of those at this point in time. But that's just from what I heard. Um, mm -hmm. I like this, and especially like Angular 4 um, with TypeScript. I don't know if you've used TypeScript yet. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me a lot of .NET, which mm -hmm. I haven't done much .NET, but, and I used to hate defined variables, like mm -hmm. this has to be the specific type of data, you know, and uh, strongly typed, there we go, so it's like 4. I used to hate strongly typed, now I'm like, God, give me strongly typed data all the time, yeah. because I know exactly what it is, and I know exactly how to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's why I'm kind of moving to Angular 4, and Angular JS is really quick, like, get up and running. Like I said, it took me a couple hours to build something um, that does all this stuff. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions? Sweet. You hit the nail on the head at the time. Yes. Do you want people to put their email down so you can send them the repo link? Because that guy said they don't put it on. I'll put, I'll put it on my slide. And Okay. At the end of the or before I send it to him because I'm apparently the last person to send the slides in. Mm. So um, thank God for procrastination. <laughs> okay. Our next session in here is at 9:30. It's a show and tell blitz. Basically, the goal is that we have people sign up and just take five minutes to show us what you're working on and anything that you built recently that you think might be of interest to everybody.